Hey everyone, so uh, as you probably know, there's been a few updates to Nutex Workflow Cloud to make things uh, a little bit easier, uh, as we always try to do, make it as easy as possible for everybody to be able to build workflows. So I'm going to start off with this workflow you see in front of you, which is basically a very empty and blank workflow. And what I want to do is I want to uh, do some looping. So first of all, I need uh, some data to loop through. So I'm going to use a regular expression and I'm going to just dummy up some data. So my input text is going to be one, two, three, four, separated by semicolons. And I'm going to do a split on a semicolon, uh, doesn't matter about the case, and I'm going to store the results in a collection variable. So I'm going to just call it collection oh, oops, of data collection and create insert. It's going to insert it into there. Okay, done. So that's going to give me a collection of four pieces of data. Now what I want to do is I want to loop through that data. So I'm going to do a loop for each. And I'm going to select my collection right there. I'm going to do an insert. Now you notice because this is a collection variable, I automatically get what's the data type that I'm pulling out of that collection. In this case, it's going to be an integer. All right, done. Now, what I want to do is just log this information. So I'm going to do a log to instance details. And I go in here and I go, whoa, hold on a second. Where's my variable that I have stored the data? So as I'm iterating through each value in my collection, where is that data going? If I look at my loop for each action, it doesn't look like I'm actually storing the data anywhere. But here's what we've done that makes things a little bit easier. It's one less thing for you to have to worry about in creating variables. So I'm going to click on this log to instance details. I'm going to click on this plus again, this insert. And you'll see on the left, there's, now it says loop for each. And if I click in here, there's my loop for each object. And in there, I have two pieces of information, two variables that I can use. The current item, which is what I'm interested in, and the index, right? So now I don't have to have, or have to actually go and create extra variables to do this sort of stuff. So let's go current item. I'm going to insert that into there. And there's my log uh, that I want to do. Okay. That's cool. That's going to go through and it's going to log each value as it iterates through that for each. Now, let's say, I know this is going to be a little bizarre scenario, but let's say I wanted to go through that same uh, c collection of data within this loop. So I can quite easily just go copy and paste. So now I've got a loop and I've also, you know, storing the current item. And now I have another loop going through that same collection, integer. Now, here's the thing. What's current item? Right? Because I'm, I now have a loop within another loop. So what, what does current item mean? So let's get rid of that. If I click on insert, and I click on loop for each, now you'll see I have two loop for each ob objects, right? Both having, uh, excuse me, both having this current item and loop and index. <coughs> excuse me. So how do I differentiate that? How do I know which loop for each am I actually uh, using? So here's my recommendation, which I've been recommending for a long time in regards to really nice workflow design, is relabel your actions. So if you click on this action and click on it again, right? so two kind of slow clicks, change this and just call this in a loop. And we'll call this one out of loop. All right. Now, when I go into this log to instance details and I click on the insert button, I have my loop for each, but now I have two different objects with the proper names. So I know which one I'm actually dealing with. So I could do something like this, index, and then do the, uh, oops, let's go back there, and then do the current item for the inner loop. So now I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly which, uh, which item I'm dealing with uh, in, for the outer loop and the current item for the inner loop. So if I go and publish this, and we'll give it just like a test loop name, we'll call it test loop one workflow. And then once we publish it and we run it, we'll see what happens in regards to how the data is actually uh, being logged. All right. I have a blank form that actually initiates this workflow and you can do the workflow test uh, as well. We can actually try that out. Let's close that and go workflow testing. 
right, this should give me my blank form. I'll just click on submit. And you can see it's doing a test run, so it's not actually doing a, a proper run of the workflow. And then it should do, you'll see it actually be updating. So you're just doing an apply a regular expression action first. And then you'll see a few, every few seconds, it, you know, it logs some more information. And you can see it's logging, it's looping, etc. If I open up these log to instance details, you can see we're now logging uh, two, three, four, etc. There you go. So you can see now you don't have to worry about creating all these extra variables. One of the things that I found when I was building a lot of workflows in the past was that for every loop action that I would create in my workflow, I would then go and create another index action and another uh, like a data storage action. So as it iterates through that loop, every value gets stored into you know, a different variable. And it becomes very cumbersome, especially when you go into variables here and you see a ton of variables. So then you have to you know, make sure you have a proper naming convention uh, and you know exactly what you're doing so that you don't get lost and you don't end up using the wrong variables in your workflow and you get, you know, you get stuck and things like that. So really cool way now, as you can see, all you have to worry about is the actual collection that you want to iterate through. If you want to get any data out of it, make sure you name your action so it's a little bit more easier to find. And then when you go into inserting it into other actions, you'll see that's the actual action, a loop for each. And then you'll see the information uh, that you need in here. So perfect. All right, if you have any questions, definitely reach out. But uh, hopefully this helps you guys build better, faster, uh, and more robust workflows. Thanks for your time.